Good morning, welcome back. I'm Pete Gruber, this is Chaz Leitner. Uh, today we're going to uh, do some work in the data division of the Gruber companies where we work on metal products. So what we have here today is from a Tesla Model S, the rear drivetrain subframe, which has been compromised. And we're going to show you not only how we're going to repair this, but what caused it in the first place. And this is where I turn it over to Chaz Leitner. Well, this subframe uh, cracked from uh, poor driving habits. Uh, what happened was is uh, the person who drives this uh, drove over speed bumps too fast and drove pretty much uh, every time they took off from a light, they uh, put their foot all the way to the floor. Uh, this piece right here flexes, which flexes and breaks the a weld uh, at the edge of the weld on the crack here. And then as the part starts to flex, it breaks off the tabs. So we should probably talk about the symptoms that a driver or a vehicle owner would experience when this kind of a fault happens. Um, you're the owner of the vehicle. Describe to us what your first symptoms were, indications that something wasn't right. Yeah, absolutely. So it was, it was really, it wasn't dramatic at all. I pulled up to Chipotle and I always like to back into parking spaces. It's just how I am. I flipped the car into reverse and actually ever so gently pressed the accelerator. And then I heard this loud bang. It was so loud that I jumped out of the car immediately thinking that I actually had collided with something. And then there was nothing there. Strange, right? So I parked the car. At first I thought it was maybe an axle or a wheel bearing or something like that. So the um, Tesla solution, if you go to a service center with the symptom that you just described is, and once they recognize that the, rear, uh, that the rear motor mount is broken, they replace this entire cradle. What we're able to do, however, is repair this, which of course is going to be less expensive than an outright replacement of this entire mounting cradle. So what you're saying, you're saying that the failure in this part is all due to the user. Yes. Not, not the manufacturer? No, not at all. Well, this is alarming because I'm the, I own this. this no, I understand that. How do you drive when you take off from a light? Tell the truth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I floor, I floor it every time. Okay, so what's happening is, is that uh, that electric motor, it's on, on, when you take off, the electric motor is wanting to twist. As it twists, what it's doing is, is it's pulling up on this, and as you can see in this, the edge of the weld is cracked. Okay. So the more it bends and the more you take off, it, uh, it just flexes to the point where now the, the tabs that's, that's normally in here, like so, okay, what's happening is, is it's constantly flexing that and the bolt goes through here and it, it's just, it's metal fatigue and it just breaks. Okay. So not so trying to- driver habit. Whatever. So not trying to single out the driver of this vehicle, um, <clears throat> The performance of the Tesla vehicles is such that it's very tempting, and most people probably drive exactly like you do. I've got a P90D Ludacris, and you just can't keep your foot off of that accelerator because it's way too much fun. Right. This only happens one out of maybe a thousand Teslas. Mm -hmm. this, this is not a common thing. We've only had two of these ever. So based on what you're seeing here, we're not going to deduce from any of this that this is a design problem. No. This, is an, this is an aberration and driving habits. So Aaron, how many miles does your car have on it? I think it just rolled over 182,000 miles. And to be totally honest, uh, since you asked me to be honest, I've put almost 100,000 of those miles on this particular car in less than uh, two and a half years. Wow. That's a lot of miles. So He's a gig worker. He does DoorDash. Oh, okay. Wow, that's a lot of Not miles. Not anymore because I work for him now. Right. Okay, but Used wow. to do DoorDash, yeah. I don't know what to say to that. Okay. So, so just to get... more miles than I have on all of my cars. So, 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 so just to set the record straight at this point, um, we do not believe that this is an age-related excessive mileage type problem. This is a driving habit problem. And, and, a, uh, and a fluke. Yeah. How are we going to improve this 
we're going to mount or recreate the actual mounts that were welded onto this uh, frame here. But what we noticed is that on the front of this cradle, they welded gussets. So what we're going to do on the back here is once we mount these, we're going to replicate for some additional support these gussets for extra strength. All right, so Chaz, we've got a number of materials here. I see a, a chunk of billet aluminum. Can you tell us what the procedure to uh, restore and repair this mount is going to go like? Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is, is I'm gonna take a cut off wheel and I'm going to cut all of this out. I'm going to cut the crack out. I'm gonna re-weld the crack and then we'll grind that flush. And now I, I don't, I think I wrote them all down. I always do. There's dimensions on here. And basically yeah. this should be on this side from the edge of this casting to the face of this should be 12 inches, 750 thousandths. Between these two, I believe there is uh, two inches, 419 thousandths. And then from the surface of this face to the surface of this casting right here is eight inches. So what I do is, is I'll cut a, I cut a block of aluminum, I'll cut it extra small. And basically what will happen is, is this will go in between here and we'll set this up actually on a on the ground here. I got shim material that's in ten thousandths increments, and we'll stack this up on here. This will get stacked, and this will go on here. And after this is done, we'll clamp this. We'll set it on. We'll tack weld it. Get it all straight and square. And then we can remove this or we can actually leave it in, which I'll probably leave it in. And what that does is uh, it'll, it'll end up heat soaking this so it stays where it's supposed to. And uh, after it cools off, we'll pull it out, we'll weld the gussets onto it, and uh, this will be a finished unit. Outstanding. So you're saying it's going to be stronger than it was before? Yes. Awesome. Yes, you won't break your car again. <laughs> no awesome. matter how you drive now, it. Now, you know, if these ears weren't broken off here, technically we could go through and grind that crack out, and, but you would have never known that it had happened. Now, that is one of the things every time a car comes in, uh, we do inspect it for a crack there. Not that we've ever found one. I mean, again, this is only the second one that's ever happened to. So what amount of time does something like this take to, to repair? Not, not including removing it from the car, but... How long will this take you to fix this? Uh, altogether, five to seven hours. Thank you for watching this segment. I'm Pete Gruber. This is Aaron McKenzie, Chaz Leitner, our master welder. And what we have here today is a much improved Tesla part out of a Model S. You can see that these welds now are so substantial that even with Aaron's aggressive driving habits, this will last another 200,000 miles. As always, watch us on YouTube, Instagram, uh, what are the other platforms? We have some TikTok, all of that stuff. Smash those like buttons, hit those uh, notification bells, and uh, we will bring you more content. Any questions you have, post them down below on the videos, and we will not only answer them, but if the suggestion is solid enough, we will do more segments like this, things that interest you. Again, thank you.